In this video, we're going to assess the hoof using the ELPO hoof evaluation protocol. Our goal with this video is to help clarify or make it easier to understand the grading scale of the hoof evaluation protocol. The things that we're going to assess is our frog, our heels, our bars, and our toe, and understand how the foot grows. Terminology for this video, we will be talking about your frog, your central sulcus, the dimple, which is the back of the central sulcus, the apex of the central sulcus, and the apex of the frog. We will also be discussing the heels, the bars, which is nothing more than the termination of your wall, and we will be discussing your toe or your toe length. We'll be using the ELPO hoof mapping to assess the widest part of the foot, the tip of our bone, and our 50-50 approximation. For full details of the ELPO hoof mapping protocol, go to www.lamenessprevention.org. Things that we will be looking at and helping us in our assessment of hoof growth and distortions will be the dimple in the back part of the central sulcus and the apex of the central sulcus, this being the central sulcus. We will be locating the widest part of the foot, the approximation of the tip of P3, and our 50-50 approximation. Five things that we assess in our hoof evaluation protocol. First will be the frog. We look at the length of the frog. Is it stretched? And if so, how far? Next we look at the width of the frog. Is the frog starting to become atrophied? And the last thing of the frog is the central sulcus and the central sulcus quality. Is the central sulcus starting to be closed up? Does it have a deep crack or crevice or sensitive bottom to it? The second thing we assess are the heels. Are they an upright foot or an upright heel? Or does the heel start to become run forward and crushed? The third thing we assess will be the bars and the curvature of the bars in conjunction with the heels. The fourth thing we look at is their toe length. Oftentimes we hear that the toe is too long. How long is it? Is it a short toe or has it migrated forward and how far forward? And the fifth thing we assess is uniform wall thickness. We will be assessing uniform wall thickness in a second video. The first thing we assess is frog distortions. Our guide for helping us assess the distortions is the length of the central sulcus. So we take the distance from the dimple in the back of the central sulcus to the apex of the central sulcus. We double that distance to find our true frog apex. As the frog gets longer and gets further away from that doubled point, you can see that we go up in our distortion and our grading scale. So the frog becomes more and more stretched. The further it is from that double distance, the higher the grading is. We take the same measurement of the central sulcus and we use that to assess the width. As you can see, as the frog becomes narrower than the width of the central sulcus, we go up again in grading scale. So the frog becomes atrophied. The more atrophied or the thinner it becomes, the higher the grade it is. And the last thing that we assess in the frog is the central sulcus. The central sulcus should be fairly open with a rounded bottom to it. And as the frog becomes stretched and narrow, the central sulcus doesn't have much of a choice than to become closed up and oftentimes has a deep crevice to it and become sensitive. Understanding how the hoof grows will help us in the next section of recognizing the distortions of the heels, the bars, and the toe. The first thing that we should really pay attention to is how the horn grows or how the hoof wall grows. And the hoof does not grow straight up and down, but the horn actually moves in a slightly forward direction. 
So if we take a look at where the heels currently are and start to watch how the heels grow forward, you can see that they move forward and inward from where they were. Assessing this from the sole view oftentimes helps it be a little clearer. The first thing we will need to do is locate our dimple in the back part of the central sulcus. We will draw a line at the widest part of the foot, which is also where the bars terminate. We will assess where the current heel position is. We will also make a mark at the apex of our central sulcus. As the heel starts to grow, you will see that the heel now migrates forward and inward. If we look at where the heel is currently, at the end of excessive growth, you can see that it has migrated to about the center or 50-50 of the central sulcus, whereas it started in line with the central sulcus. So be aware that as your heels grow, they grow forward and inward. When using the chart to evaluate this, what we're looking at is where are the heels in relationship to the dimple? You can see as the heels move forward of the dimple, the further forward they go and the closer they get to the apex of the central sulcus, the higher the number is, the greater the distortion is. The next thing we assess is your bar growth. Now, because the bar is attached to the heel, there's a direct correlation with what the heel does to what the bar does. We assess this by making a mark or putting a straight edge on the outside of the frog and the commissure here. And what we're looking at is the distance from the edge of the frog to the curvature of the bar or the commissure, like such. We're looking at the distance from the edge of the frog to the curvature of the bar. Now, if we watch, as these heels start to migrate forward, the bar has no choice but to bend. Now if we assess this and put a straight edge on the edge of the frog, you can see how the distance that has increased and how much greater bend there is in the bar. So when using the uh, hoof evaluation protocol and assessing our bars, we take a straight edge and look from the edge of the frog to the bend in the commissure of the bar. As the bar starts to bend and gets greater and greater, the further the distance from the edge of the frog, the greater the distortion and the greater the grade is. The last thing we're going to assess is the toe growth. Again, Remember, because of the way the horn is, and then it grows in this direction, as the foot grows, the toe migrates forward and oftentimes it starts to bend and flare and go outward. If we look at this from a lateral and a solar view at the same time, and we mark the widest part of the foot, you can see two things. One, as the heels go forward, they go inward, but also as the toe grows forward, it goes outward. Now this can happen on just one side or the other. It does not have to happen just straight out, but a toe does grow forward and outward. Using the grading scale, how we assess this is from the widest part of the foot to the dimple. That distance, again doubled, is our 50-50 approximation. This is a zero. As the toe starts to get further from the distance of the 50-50 approximation, you can see we go up in numbers, which is up in distortion and in the grading scale. Again, for the actual numbers to assess your hoof, you'll need to go to www.laymansprevention.org and print out a copy of the hoof evaluation scale. You will be ha able to assess your frogs, your bars, your heels, and your toe length from a 0 to 5 scale. Thank you.